Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker-popped wheat and Quaker-popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Extra, extra! Try this extra special breakfast treat! Yes, put ready to serve Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice together in a cereal dish. Separate the two with fruit and add milk or cream. It's different. It hits a spot. Every luscious spoonful you put in your mouth makes you want more and more. Mmm, so crisp and tender. So full of nut-like flavor. Tomorrow morning, try this extra special treat. Both Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Sergeant Preston was returning to Dawson from a northern patrol. One morning, soon after breaking camp, he was overtaken by a sudden blizzard. There's a cave up ahead, King. We can take shelter there until the storm dies down. A moment later, he braked his sled to a halt. Hunting! Taking a lantern from his sled, he headed up the slope on foot with his great lead dog, Yukon King, at his side. Suddenly, as they approached the mouth of the cave, the great dog stopped short with a bristling growl. What's wrong, fella? Something in there? A moment later, as the glow of the lantern dispersed the darkness at the rear of the cave, Sergeant Preston saw what King had been growling at. Oh, a dead she-wolf and a cub. Now, calm down, little fella. We're not going to hurt you. Both the cub and the dead she-wolf looked gaunt and emaciated. The sergeant frowned as he saw a bullet wound in the she-wolf's chest. King, I'm afraid this is the wolf I shot at last night. No wonder it was prowling around our camp, half-starved. I guess you could put away a few strips of caribou meat, couldn't you, little fella? Well, you wait here and I'll get some off the sled. As soon as the cub had eaten its fill, it promptly rolled over on its side and went to sleep. Sergeant Preston looked at King with a mixture of exasperation and amusement. Well, what the dickens are we going to do with him, King? We can't leave him here to die. Oh, <laughs> uh, in other words, it's my problem and I'm stuck with it. Within a few hours, the blizzard had slackened enough for the sergeant to continue his journey. Later that same day, Sergeant Preston approached a cabin on the banks of a desolate creek. A boy emerged from the cabin to greet him. Hello, Joey. Hawking. How are you, Hutchins? What a... As Sergeant Preston halted his team, an old man came out and joined the boy. Hello there, Sergeant. Hello, Clint. How are you, King, old boy? By golly, it's good to see you two again. It's good to see you folks again. Sergeant, what's that on your sled? You mean that nose sticking out from under the road? Why, it's a puppy. Yes, but not the kind you're thinking. What do you mean, Sergeant? It's a wolf cub. A wolf cub? Oh, golly. May I see him, Sergeant? Go ahead, Joey. Oh, look at him. Well, what do you know about that? Hey, bring him over here and let's have a look at him. <laughs> uh, look at the way he carries on when I scratch him behind the ears. <laughs> what are you going to do with him, Sergeant? I wish I knew. I'm afraid he's going to be quite a problem. Oh, golly. Could I have him, Sergeant? I was afraid that question was coming. <clears throat> well, uh, Joey, you're welcome to him as far as I am concerned, but it's up to your grandpa. May I keep him, Grandpa? Please? Yeah. Oh, shucks, I guess so. All this was too soft-hearted for my own good. Before you decide to take him, Joey, there's one thing I'd better make clear. What's that, Sergeant? Once he gets big enough to fend for himself, you'll have to turn him loose. Why? Because there's no such thing as a tame wolf. At least, not one you can depend on. 
A wolf may act tame and seem perfectly trustworthy, but there's always the chance he'll turn vicious, just when you least expect it. Sergeant Preston is right, Joey. Oh, gee. Do you still want the cub under those circumstances? Well, sure, I want him, all right. I'd want him even if I could only keep him for a few weeks. But golly, I wish I could keep him for always. Clint Sparks invited the sergeant to stay for supper. When the meal was finished and Clint had lit up his favorite corncob pipe, Sergeant Preston said, Clint, are you still working the old jackknife mine? Yeah, that's right, Sergeant. I ain't getting much gold out of it right now, just enough to keep me and Joey in bacon and beans. Oh. But you mark my words, the jackknife ain't played out yet. No, sir, not by a long shot. I hope you're right. The sergeant glanced at Joey, who was playing on the floor with his new pet, while King looked on with an air of dignified tolerance. Joey, you decided what to name the cub yet? Oh? Butch? Oh. <laughs> That's a mighty tough name for such a scrawny little critter. But I reckon it'll fit him well enough six months from now. Yes, it will for a fact. <coughs> well, Clint, thanks for the meal. It's about time for King and me to hit the trail. Sure, you gotta go so soon. Why don't you put up here for the night and start out first thing in the morning? Thanks, but we'd better push on for Dawson. We'll stop in next time that we're by this way. See how you're making out with Butch. In the months that followed, Butch the wolf cub grew into a rangy, handsome young timber wolf with silver-gray fur and long, powerful jaws. And yet, in spite of his fearsome appearance, he was greatly attached to his young master, Joey Sparks, and remained as playful as a puppy. One afternoon in late August, when Sergeant Preston stopped by the cabin, Butch began romping and tussling as usual with his old friend, King. Oh, <laughs> golly, Sergeant Preston. Just look at them trying to take that stick of wood away from each other. They sure do get along swell together. Yes, it's really amazing, Joey. I've known several cases where wolf cubs were raised as pets, but I've never seen one turn out as friendly as Butch. I, uh, I take it your grandfather has a visitor. Oh, yes, sir. That horse belongs to my cousin. Your cousin? Yes, sir. Eli Hooker, his name is. He runs the trading post over at Nugget Gap. Oh, I didn't know you were cousins. Oh, we hardly ever see him. He just dropped over because Grandpa isn't feeling well. What's wrong? Well, the doctor in Dawson says he's got a bad heart. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll go in and say hello to him. Sure, go on right in. He'll be glad to see you. <laughs> Eli Hooker was seated beside the old man's bunk as Sergeant Preston entered the cabin. Clint Sparks greeted the Molly. Well, howdy, Sergeant. I thought that was your voice I heard outside. Hello, Clint. Yes, you and Eli know each other, don't you? <laughs> of course, of course. How are you, Sergeant? Well enough, thanks. Uh, draw up a chair, Sergeant. <laughs> Don't bother. <laughs> you may have mine. I was just going anyway. <laughs> well, goodbye, Uncle Clint. Be sure and take good care of yourself. Don't worry about me. <laughs> so long, Sergeant. Goodbye, Eli. Oh. Yeah, that smooth-talking, two-faced sidewinder. Something wrong? Oh, I guess you haven't heard the news yet, Sergeant. Fact is, I struck it rich last week. Oh, congratulations, Clint. Then you were right about the mine not being played out. Oh, bet you I was right. For the looks of this new ore streak I just uncovered, me and Joey may soon be millionaires. I'm very glad for both your sakes. You certainly earned your good luck, Clint. Eli Hooker never showed his nose around this cabin when he thought I might want to borrow money from him. Now that I'm in the chips, he's trying to butter me up. Oh, it's human nature, I guess. Polecat nature is more like it. Joey tells me you've been seeing the doctor. Yep, that's right, Sergeant. My heart started acting up on me the other day. I guess the excitement of finding all that gold was a little too much for me. Doc says I'll have to stay quiet for a spell. You'd better do what he tells you. Remember, you've got Joey to look at. I know I have. I'm just thankful I made this strike before it was too late. Now, if anything does happen to me, I want you to promise me you'll sort of keep an eye on Joey. You can count on that, Clint, but let's hope the two of you will be together for a long time to come. As the short autumn season drew to a close and winter approached, Butch grew more and more restless. Every night, the call of the wolf pack sounded in the forest bordering the creek. And every night, Butch echoed the call more fiercely and insistently. One night, both Joey and his grandfather were awakened from their sleep by the clamor. Butch, as usual, was penned up in the woodshed. Joey. Are you awake? Yes, Grandpa. We'd better turn Butch loose. But, Grandpa, if we do, he'll never come back. I know, son, but we've got to do it. Throwing on some clothes hastily, the boy and the old man went out to the woodshed. <laughs> As
As they opened the door of the shed, Butch's growls died away, and the big gray wolf stepped warily out into the open. For a moment, he looked into Joey's eyes, and then, as the cry of the wolf pack sounded again, he bounded forward with an eager growl. No, Butch! Joey flung his arms around Butch's neck and tried to hold him back. Butch, please stay here! With a sudden jerk, Butch broke free and ran. Butch, don't go, please! Oh, let him go, Joey. It was bound to happen sometime. The sooner he goes, the sooner you'll forget him. I'll never forget him. I'll never forget him. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Did you ever wonder what it would be like traveling on a Yukon riverboat? Of course, I'd want to be sure they'd have my favorite breakfast cereal aboard. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Gotta have the cereal shot from guns. Hey, a vast there, landlubber. What in thunder's going on here? Uh-oh. You must be the captain. You bet. I'm running things here. I don't stand for no gunplay. Oh, yes, sir. I, I mean, aye, aye, sir. But that shooting you heard now was just me explaining about the keenest tasting breakfast ever. About what? I mean the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Hey, that's a new kind of shooting to me. You see, we load huge guns with choice sun-ripened premium grains of rice or wheat. And then these guns are exploded. Out come big, giant grains, exploded up to eight times normal size. They're magnified, crispified, shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. That's why Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are so good to eat. <laughs> Sounds sort of tasty. And for breakfast, lunch, or supper, all you do is pour out a bowl full right from the package. No cooking. Just add milk or cream and top with your favorite fruit. That's for me. What's more, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are nourishing. They furnish added health values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Well, let's load some sex of them on the boat. Oh, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. And that's something for you fellas and girls to remember, too. Tell your mom to please look for the red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Then she'll be sure to get the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. Now to continue. Winter had come again to the Yukon. One day, Sergeant Preston was making a patrol that took him past Clint Sparks' cabin. As his team approached the cabin, the door opened and Joey Sparks rushed out to hail him frantically. Hello, Joey. Hooking. Hello, your husband. Hello. Oh, I'm glad you came. What's wrong? It's Grandpa. He's had a heart attack. Oh. As Sergeant Preston entered the cabin, he saw Clint Sparks lying on the bunk. The old man's face was mottled, and his breathing was labored and painful. Clint. Uh, hello, Sergeant. Joey, I'm taking your grandfather to the hospital in Dawson. You stay here and wait until I get back. It was late at night when Sergeant Preston returned to the lonely cabin... He told Joey that his grandfather was out of danger for the moment, but would have to remain in the hospital for some time. Meantime, Joey would have to stay with his cousin, Eli Hooker, at Nugget Gap. Two hours later, the sergeant and Joey arrived at Eli Hooker's trading post and knocked on the door. The door was opened by Eli's assistant, a half-breed named Lachine. What you want? Where's Eli Hooker? Uh, what's up, sergeant? I... Oh... <laughs> Hello there, Joey. Hello, Cousin Eli. Clint Sparks has had a heart attack. I've taken him to the hospital in Dawson. Oh. Can you keep Joey here for the time being? Of course, of course. You must be pretty dogged out, eh, Joey? <laughs> well, I'll have Lachine fix you up someplace to sleep right now. Later, after Joey had gone to sleep and Lachine had brewed some coffee, Sergeant Preston disclosed the true facts of the situation to Eli Hooker. I didn't tell Joey, but the doctor thinks that Clint won't recover. He's afraid he won't last more than a few days. Ah, that's a shame, Sergeant. I've always been mighty fond of Uncle Clint. More coffee, Sergeant. No, thanks. I have to go to Malamute Creek, but I'll be back in Dawson by tomorrow night. If Clint should take a turn for the worse, I'll notify you immediately. Uh, that's mighty kind of you, Sergeant. Sure you won't wait here till morning? No, thanks. I have to make up for lost time. Well, goodbye, Sergeant. Bye. 
As Sergeant Preston left the trading post, Eli Hooker turned to the half-breed Lachine with an evil smile. <laughs> Looks like I'm playing in luck, eh, Lachine? Eh? Uh, what you mean? Well, the old man can't last more than a few days. In the meantime, the kid's in my hands. If both of them should die, I'd be sole heir to the jackknife mine. Ah, uh, but boy not sick, just old man. Yes, it's true, very true. But suppose some kind of an accident would have happened to little Joey. Mm. <laughs> uh, me savvy. <laughs> Two days later, Eli Hooker and his half-breed assistant stood looking out the window of the trading post. Darkness had fallen early as a heavy snowstorm swept down from the north. Just the kind of weather we need. Eli reached in his pocket and took out a small <laughs> vial containing a colorless liquid. Now, yeah, we'll give this to the kid. We'll put him to sleep. Almost immediately after supper that evening, Joey felt himself becoming strangely drowsy. Oh, gosh, I feel sleepy. Yes, I'll go upstairs and lie down for a while. Why, sure, Joey, you do that. A few minutes later, the half-breed reported to Eli Hooker. How about it, Lachine? <laughs> I'm fast asleep. Oh, good. Go out and hitch up the team. In the meantime, I'll get the kid into his pocket. Eli and Lachine loaded the boy's limp body on the sled. Then they drove to a thickly wooded spot in the hills several miles from the trading post. We dump him out here? Yes, right up against this clump of bushes. Uh, Give me a hand here. Uh, That's it. Uh, yeah, look as though he stopped here for shelter and finally collapsed. You sure him not wake up? Yeah, positive. When those knockout drops inside him, even an earthquake won't wake him up. By morning, he'll be frozen solid. Hey, you hear that? Maybe wolves get him. What's the difference? Either way, I'll be sole heir to the jackknife mine. And when the old man hears what happened to the kid, maybe the shock will finish him off all the sooner. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. That same evening, Sergeant Preston was summoned to Clint Sparks' bedside at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Dawson City. How are you feeling, Clint? I just had another bad spell. Doc won't tell me the truth, but... I reckon I won't last out the night. Keep your chin up, Clint. You'll pull through. No use kidding myself. All I want is just to see Joey again before I cash in my chips. Will you go get him and bring him here, Sergeant? Of course I will. I'll go right away. Meanwhile, the wolf pack was prowling close to the spot where Joey Sparks had been left, drugged and unconscious, by Eli Hooker and the half-breed. The leader of the pack trotted ahead to sniff out the situation. But as he did so, another wolf suddenly shot forward with a menacing growl. The leader saw a young wolf who had recently joined the pack. This was a bold and direct challenge. The leader bristled with rage. Slowly and warily, with ears laid back, the two opponents began to circle each other. Suddenly, the leader sprang. His fangs sought the gray wolf's throat, but the gray wolf reared and met the rush with his chest. A moment later, the two were tangled in a snarling, slashing duel to the death. The gray wolf was young and strong, but the black leader was a more experienced fighter. As the fight went on, the black wolf's strength began to ebb, and finally he went down. A moment later, the gray wolf stood over his vanquished foe and gave vent to an eerie howl of victory. The pack closed in, but to their surprise and disappointment, the gray wolf refused to let them approach the boy lying on the ground. A chorus of angry growls arose from the pack. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston had arrived at the trading post. Sergeant Preston, come on in. I sure didn't expect to see you at this hour of the night. Clint Sparks is dying. Oh, great Scott. Wake up, Joey, and tell him to get dressed. I'll take him back to town on the uh, sled. I'm afraid that's impossible, Sergeant. What do you mean? Well, the fact is, Joey's not here. He, he's run away. Run away? What happened? Why, uh, he's been wanting to go to Dawson to, to be near his grandfather. Naturally, I told him he was supposed to stay here with me, but he just flew into a tantrum and he wouldn't listen. This afternoon, he went out to play. He didn't come back. Haven't you tried to find him? Of course I have. Both Lachine and I have been out searching most of the evening. We couldn't find a trace of him. In my opinion, he's on his way to town right now. He'll never make it in weather like this. Get me something he's worn recently. 
Uh, what are you going to do? Put King on his scent and try to track him down. Meanwhile, the gray wolf was still holding the rest of the pack at bay. Whenever the other wolves threatened to close in on him, he would warn them off with a menacing snarl. And slowly, the pack would fade back. Then the gray wolf would lie down beside the unconscious boy, trying to warm him with the heat of his own body. At times, he would lick the boy's face. But always, he kept a vigilant gaze fixed on the circle of baleful yellow eyes that watched him from a safe distance. He knew that sooner or later, the pack would work up enough courage to charge him. And he waited tensely, gathering his strength to meet their assault. Finally, it came. The pack swept forward, and the gray wolf met them with slashing fangs, only to go down overwhelmed by sheer weight of numbers. But suddenly, shots rang out. The wolf pack wavered and fell back as a snarling husky charged forward to take his place at the gray wolf's side. In a few moments, the fight was over, and the wolf pack had melted away into the forest. The gray wolf crouched, nervous and trembling, as Sergeant Preston spoke to him in a calm, reassuring voice. Good work, Butch. You've paid back all the love and care that Joey ever gave you. The sergeant felt Joey's pulse and then pushed back his eyelids gently. He's been drugged, King. I thought that story Eli Hooker gave me was pretty thin. Well, we'll deal with him when we get back to the post. Half an hour later, Eli Hooker and Lachine were waiting nervously at the trading post. You suppose dog tracked down, boy? I don't know. Scent trail won't last very long with this snowstorm going on. Besides, even if they do find him, the kid may be dead by this time. Boy, not dead. Maybe Mountie find out him been doped. Yeah, maybe so. We better not take any chances. Hey, what are you doing? Taking gun out of draw. What uh, for? Just got through telling you we better not take any chances. Slip this gun inside my vest. If it turns out Preston is wise to us, I'll settle his hash right now. With a lead slug. Maybe that him now. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. Sergeant Preston was carrying Joey in his arms. Sergeant, you found him? Yes, and you have some explaining to do, Hooker. The boy's been drugged. As Sergeant Preston strode into the room, King saw Eli Hooker jerk out his revolver from inside his vest. This gun will do all the explaining that's necessary. Don't try for your gun, Preston. Just drop the kid on the counter and get your hands up. All right, Hooker. King tensed. He had been carefully trained and knew what it meant when someone held a gun on his master. Hooker, this proves your guilt. You have the drop on me, but you didn't count on King! King heard his name and leaped. His jaws closed on Hooker's gun arm. The force of his charge knocked the crook to the floor. Help! Call him off, Preston! The Sheen saw his boss's plight. He whipped out a knife and prepared to hurl it at the sergeant. I fix you, Mounty. No, you don't. Oh. Try any more false moves and you'll get the next bullet between the eyes instead of in the arm. Call off this dog, Preston. Call him off. Not till I've picked up your gun, Hooker. That's better. All right, King, you can let him up now while I put on the handcuffs. Hooker, you and Lachine are both under arrest in the name of the Queen. The charge is attempted murder. The following day, Joey and Sergeant Preston sat at Clint Sparks' bedside. Joey had recovered from his ordeal with no serious after-effects, and his grandfather had also rallied from his crisis of the previous evening. You're looking a whole lot better, Clint. And I'm feeling a whole lot better, Sergeant. <laughs> Reckon I kind of surprised both the doctor and myself the way I pulled through that spell last night. What's the doctor say now? Well, he says if I stay here at the hospital and... Rest up for a while. There's no reason why I shouldn't be back on my feet in a couple of weeks. Of course, I won't be able to do any more heavy work at the mine. Oh, with the mine rich like it is, you won't have to, Grant. You can hire all the help you need. <laughs> By thunder, I will at that. <laughs> uh, there's one thing you still haven't told me. And that is, what happened to Butch? Well, he followed me back to the trading post last night... And trailed after my sled when I brought Joey and the prisoners into town. You mean you've got him here in Dawson? No, he stopped at the outskirts of town, wouldn't come any farther. But I have an idea he'll be around to visit you when you go back to your cabin. Oh, golly, I sure hope so. If he does, can we keep him again, Grandpa? I mean, for as long as he wants to stay. You bet your boots we can, Joey. That's one wolf that'll always be welcome at your door, <laughs> eh, Clint? <laughs> he sure will, Sergeant. And say... I still ain't thanked you and King. No for need all... to thank us, Clint. We were just doing our job. Now that Joey's safe and Hooker and Lachine are behind bars, this case is closed. In 
In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Say, fellas and girls, imagine having your own model of a Yukon riverboat. Well, you can. It's one of the 59 exciting cutout models you can get of Sergeant Preston's Yukon Trail. They come with eight different packages of delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So hurry to your grocers. There's no waiting, no box tops, no extra cost. With these larger, easier-to-build models, it's like the Yukon Trail appearing right before your eyes. The very places where Sergeant Preston and King have their exciting adventures. You get models of a gold mining camp, the White Horse Jail, Wells Fargo office, Mounty headquarters. They're amazingly different models. You can hitch up the dog sleds and huskies and move them around. The Yukon Riverboat has a paddle wheel that actually turns. So build your complete Yukon Trail from White Horse to Dawson right away. Remember, these wonderful models come only on the big red and blue packages of swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The original, crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. Act fast. Get them at your grocer's now. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Canyon Cash. When Jonathan Bradley and I rode out on the Canyon Trail to find the gold that had been cached there, King tried to tell us that we were being followed. But we could see nothing in the darkness and could hear nothing above the rain. The outlaws waited until after we'd found the gold before they attacked, and then we had to fight for our lives. The sheer precipice at our backs, the outlaw guns cutting off our only avenue of escape. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These adventure dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. <laughs>